Yeah, I know you're going to be wondering why I made this video on uh, full frame versus DX sensors, why each is both good and bad, but I wanted to make a really simple synopsis video. I think the first two videos that I made, while accurate and full, uh, might have been too complicated for people, so people just want to, like, no-duh rundown list of why FX sensors are better and worse and why DX sensors are better and worse. FX sensors have larger photo sites or pixels, but that doesn't mean that they gather more light, but have a higher likelihood of strike over time, UT. Um, full frame sensors allow for uh, lower noise levels at high ISOs and greater dynamic range of the image captured. The unit of time, you have a higher likelihood of strike on a full frame uh, photo site or pixel than you do on the DX, but ultimately also we have an enormous amount more on the DX sensor than we do on the full frame. Dynamic range, of course, describes the fullness of range of the tones which the sensor can capture below that level which a pixel becomes completely white or blown out, but yet above that level where texture is indiscernible from background noise. In other words, above that level where it doesn't become black, where it doesn't become blown out or white. So you have a high dynamic range. Pixel density for now, in 2015, is lower on a full frame sensor, which means that each pixel is both larger and more spaced out from the next pixel, which allows for more light per UT, unit of time, i.e. just a big bullseye strike service, to make an analogy very simple. Likewise, the spacing means that the uh, EM fields and electromagnetic interference, i.e. noise, is reduced. This mean noise means that there is higher I ISO latitude, higher high ISO latitude on the full frame sensor. But ultimately this doesn't mean the full frame sensors are better period, but rather they have a better latitude in high contrast low light situations. But a lot of that has been reduced in the past year, year and a half. And especially they have a tonal gradation that is superior on the image shot. The downside is if you end up cropping the FX image to the size of a DX image, you're really uh, far and away reduced a lot of your advantages and also have less pixel density for enlargement latitude. FX sensors have better dynamic range and high ISO signal to noise ratio performance. But much of that advantage has been greatly narrowed between FX and DX sensors lately. DX cameras will spank the hell out of full frame sensors due to higher pixel density, which is why nature shooters with $20,000 lenses, that, which typically 99% of the time are cropping their image, prefer DX sensors due to their per millimeter resolving power from high pixel density. However, this is about to change next year. Full frame sensors will have all the advantages of DX sensors. Full frame sensors have a huge arsenal of lenses to take advantage of, especially w uh, the wider angles and the field of view. I mean, you can take the best FX uh, lens and throw it on a DX camera, but your field of view has obviously changed. In this case, full frame sensors spank the hell out of DX sensors. Like a 200 millimeter lens, for example, on a camera with a crop factor 1.5 has the same angle of view as a 300 millimeter lens on an old full frame camera. The extra reach for a given number of pixels is also much higher on a DX sensor. It is extremely helpful in wildlife or sports photography. The FX advantages is that if one used a 50mm lens on a full frame sensor, this would produce a depth of field so shallow that it would require an aperture of like 0.89 on a camera with a DX sensor, which is impossible. But this really isn't huge or a major consideration for most things other than portraiture and very high depth of field control. A smaller sensor like a DX is not inferior. D7100 and D750 are the same megapixel count. The megapixel count is only a small portion of the story of final image quality and resolution. Ultimately, photo sight gain and signal noise ratio and latitude is insanely important. DX users, uh, DX cameras uh, users uh, with the DX sensors can use some of the crappy FX lenses which have optical impurities such as vignetting and edge distortion, meaning they can cut the nasty crap off an FX lens and only use the sweet spot of the center of the lens. In this case, the DX sensor has better latitude with crappy performing FX lenses. This means a crop sensor effectively discards the lowest quality portion of the image, which is quite useful when using low quality lenses, as these typically, traditionally, and basically always, have the worst edge quality. This is also why FX lenses make one hell of a damn sharp lens for a DX camera. Uh, FX fisheye lenses make one heck of a, uh, a sharp lens for a DX camera. The larger pixels 
on FX uh, camera have greater a flux of light density during a given exposure over time at the same f-stop. So their light signal is much stronger meaning better high ISO latitude over a UT unit of time which means they also have better dynamic range and tonal latitude. This is just like a Yagi antenna. The larger photosites aren't gathering more light or EM but greater gain in SNR ratio. Native ISO level SNR ratio versus uh, firmware and AD converter which is what DX sensors are currently doing now. There's a trick. Well, it's not necessarily a trick. They're just actually manipulating the image between the sensor and the read card instead of actually getting native awesome dynamic range at the sensor level. But this has its negative side as well. It's just like a large field full of satellite dishes or a larger larger size versus smaller field with tiny dishes. Enlarging in on that DX field yields more resolving information. Whereas the larger dishes have better tonal gain per dish and better low signal i.e. high ASO and low light capacity. Okay? I'm going to crop here. We've got a lot more information here even though it's got bad SNR. We can crop in here. we got less information but we have awesome SNR. But this is going to make it look like a grainy, um, you know, a, a low resolution image if you crop in on this with the larger and less pixels in the full frame, obviously and logically so. Each larger pixel is like a faster lens. It allows for more light strikes, but not capture as wrongly thought. It's not capturing more light, but allowing for superior SNR. Even if two sensors have the same noise when viewed at 100%, uh, the sensor with the higher pixel count, i.e. DX sensor, will produce a cleaner looking final print. This is because the noise gets enlarged less for higher pixel count sensors for a given print size. Therefore the noise has a higher frequency and thus appears finer grained. Digital camera sensor gain contains micro lenses above and around which each photo site enhances their light gathering capacity. These lenses are analogous to funnels which direct uh, light uh, quantity into the photo site or the pixel where the, fo where the, uh, the light packets would have otherwise gone unused. So we have this number where that happens there. Okay, we have light coming in to there or over here. Okay, but it gets directed into there. Those are micro lenses on the FX sensor. The optical performance of wide angle lenses is as rarely as good as the longer focal length since DX sensors are forced to use a wider angle lens such as the 10.5 millimeter fisheye versus the 16, point, uh, 16 millimeter uh, fisheye lens for a full frame camera to produce the same angle of view as a larger sensor can therefore degrade quality. Real world camera sensors do not actually have photo sites which cover the entire surface of the sensor. Like if this were a, uh, analogous to a full frame sensor over here, the actual photo sites of the pixels cover between 50, 60, 60 plus percent of uh, the actual uh, full frame sensor. It's not actually every little spot where it is very tightly uh, tightly uh, placed on the uh, DX sensor over here analogously on the right. FX advantages. High sensitivity as each pixel, uh, each physical pixel on FX sensor is much larger than the pixel or photo site on an equivalent megapixel DX sensor. The FX version has more area from which to capture light. This translates into higher sensitivity, or to put it into another way, lower noise. This means it outputs amazing high ISO images far beyond those of DX and indeed other 35 millimeter full frame chips. Additionally, the larger light gathering capacity of the full frame pixel also helps to improve dynamic range and allow for finer tonal gradation. Larger, brighter viewfinder, okay? You know, on an FX uh, camera, you got a, a larger honking mirror. On a DX camera, you have a smaller mirror reflecting up into the pen prism and out into the viewfinder. So you got more light uh, popping in your eyeball, which of course is very helpful in low light scenes on a full frame camera than you do on a DX camera. You just got a larger mirror reflecting more light up into your eyeball. FX disadvantages, image uniformity. The FX sensor really does stress the lens being used. If you use an FX lens on a DX body, you're just using the sweet spot, i.e. the center of the lens. On an FX, you're only using, you're also using the edges of that lens, which are never as sharp as the center. Just remember the focal length multiplier, i.e. the DX, has a different field of view. It is not actual magnification of the light shot out of the back of the rear element. 
Okay? It's not. The lens focal length does not change because the lens is used on a different size sensor, just its angle of view. A 50 millimeter lens is always a damn 50 millimeter lens, regardless of the sensor type that's sitting underneath it. All that has changed is the total angle of interception. Okay? Angle of interception. There is no magnification on DX, you can call it relative crop factor, you can call it focal length multiplier. It's a different field of view, but there's no magnification. A lens doesn't know or give a crap what is underneath it. A lens is always taking a dump of the same light density and the same circle of light out its little rear end, i.e. the rear element. It doesn't give a crap what is on the other end of that camera. Okay, you take a 50 millimeter FX lens and you stick it on a full frame camera or a DX camera, the lens doesn't give a damn. It craps out the same light and the same density. Okay, the only thing that happens is you have a change in focal length multiplier, you can call it a different field of view, that is this angle of interception. This is what is intercepted from the circle of light that this 50 millimeter lens has taken a crap out of its rear element. It doesn't know, it doesn't give a damn what the hell sort of size sensor is sitting underneath it inside the camera. Doesn't matter. It doesn't know. So this crap on, you know, this crap that uh, we have to apply a zoom factor. People always say, well, the DX uh, sensor zooms the image. No, it doesn't zoom anything. The lens craps out the same light with the same uh, lux density per square millimeter. The only difference is the size of the landing pad, if you will. How much is captured, i.e. the angle of interception. We can call it a focal length multiplier. The DX has a different field of view. And remember, like I said, uh, camera technology is going to change drastically. Middle of next year, Canon has already announced it. What we have are FX sensors with DX pixel densities. Okay. The blur between FX and DX, now we got FX, we got DX, now the FX and DX are going to be like, they already are basically like this now, FX and DX. They're basically FX and DX are like this now. And what's going to happen the next year is that we're going to have, instead of FX versus DX, which is what we have now, it's like, over here we got FX and over here we got DX. What's going to happen next year? I'm going to make it really simple for you, and I assure you that this is 100% accurate is what we're going to have FX and DX over here and God knows what they're going to call it over here. They're going to maybe call it uh, uh, XFX. Who knows they're going to call it XFX. It's basically going to be an F full frame sensor with DX pixel density. So the line is already blurred now drastically between full frame mostly between due to AD converters and firmware actually taking out the time factor which causes uh, SNR issues on DX sensors. So now we're going to have this next year versus this. Because every company works the same. It's innovate or die. Innovate or die. You gotta make new shit so people can go out and spend their money and buy new shit. Shit they don't necessarily need but they probably want. They go look at the images and if you look at the images of the new 50 megapixel uh, Canon you go, oh my god, oh my god, I can blow this picture up 200%. I can do like a this is how awesome the image is. However, it's not so great. I mean, you don't necessarily need that. It's like, this whole thing is the image. And like, well, I can crop out of here of this FX, the new FX sensor. I can crop this and still blow this up to 20 by 30 and make one hell of a killer. And, well, I, here's an idea. How about you just take a current FX or DX camera and zoom with your damn feet or zoom with the lens and take a picture of this. But it does give you more latitude. But that's the next generation. And, uh, uh, Four or five past two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, is FX DX, FX DX, FX DX. What's happened over the years is here's here's FX, here's DX. They're not like this. They're not actually that close, but they're damn close. It's more like this. Okay, so next year it's going to be FX DX over here, and what they're going to name it, who knows? But this is what's going to be next year. Now you got the explanation of the difference between FX and DX, advantages and disadvantages of both. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, drop me a buck or two because I just kicked my ass on this one. I kicked it! Should be the best video on YouTube as far as differentiating out uh, full frame and uh, DX sensor.